one day, as the Sultan of Shiraz was concluding a public celebration, a Hindu appeared at the foot of his throne with an ebony horse. This horse, said the Hindu, is a great wonder. If I mount him and turn this peg here near the saddle, it will rise into the air and I can fly to the most distant parts of the world. The Sultan marveled at this, as did his son, the Prince Feroz Shah. I'll buy him if he's for sale, cried the Prince. But first, I must ride him and find out if he really will fly. The Hindu ran forward eagerly to help him mount, but without waiting, the Prince leaped into the saddle and turned the peg. The prince was carried through the air with fearful speed. All that day he flew about the sky, and at last, at about midnight, he descended. Groping about in the dark, he presently reached a staircase which led to an apartment, the door of which was half open. Beyond was a magnificent chamber with many beds, one of which was placed higher than the others, and on this bed there slept a most beautiful princess. The prince fell on his knees and gently pulled at the sleeve of the sleeping princess. She opened her eyes and was surprised to see a handsome prince bending over her. The prince then rose to his feet and bowed low. Oh, beautiful princess, he said, through a most extraordinary adventure, you see before you a prince, son of the Sultan of Persia, who prays for your assistance and protection. The princess was much taken by the handsome looks of the prince, and in answer to his appeal said, Oh, prince, you are in no barbarous country, but in the kingdom of the Raja of Bengal. I am his eldest daughter, and most gladly grant you the protection you ask. Then she ordered her serving women to prepare an apartment fit for so handsome and great a prince. The next morning, true to her word, and taking more pains than she'd ever done before in dressing and adorning herself, she received him as a guest of the palace. If the truth be told, she'd fallen in love with the prince at very first sight, as indeed had he with her. She saw to it that her father, the Raja, received him as well, and that he was entertained royally. And so, for two months, the prince stayed in the palace in Bengal, and any thought he had of returning home was lost in the endless round of hunts and feasts and royal entertainment. But at last he realized that he could not remain away any longer, and asked leave to return to his father. And so great was his love for the princess, he begged her to go with him. The princess, however, knew that her father would not allow this, for the son of the king of Hind had already sought her hand in marriage. But he was as ugly as the prince Feroz Shah was handsome. So she agreed to depart secretly with the prince. The next morning, a little before daybreak, when all the attendants were still asleep, the prince and the princess stole out to the terrace where the ebony horse was. Turning the horse to face Shiraz, he mounted, and when the princess was well settled behind him, with her arms about his waist, he turned the peg of ascent. The horse rose into the air smoothly and with its accustomed speed, and in two hours they came in sight of the Persian capital. Meanwhile, the Sultan of Shiraz had imprisoned the Hindu as a sorcerer. But now that his son was returned with a beautiful princess, he ordered the Hindu to be released and gave him magnificent gifts on condition he leave Persia forever. But the Hindu was dissatisfied and determined to revenge himself. While the prince was with the Sultan, Telling him all that had happened, the Hindu mounted the flying horse and flew to the summer palace of the Sultan, where, for the time being, the prince had left the princess. Seeking out the captain of the guard, he told him that he came with orders from the Sultan to take the princess to the capital, 
where he, the Sultan, awaited her in the great square of the palace. The princess and the captain both believed him. But when the princess was secure behind him on the horse, he turned the peg and away he flew with her, over the palace and out of sight, leaving the prince and the sultan and all the royal city behind, weeping and lamenting over the loss of the princess. Nor did the Hindu turn the peg of descent until he was thousands of leagues away in the kingdom of Kashmir. Here, with the gifts he'd received from the Sultan of Persia, he intended to set himself up as a great noble and take the princess for his wife. He landed in a forest outside the city, and leaving the princess and the horse, of which she knew not the secret, he went into town to arrange for food and lodging. Now, while he was gone, the king of Kashmir happened to pass through the woods with his huntsmen. And hearing the princess's cries, he rescued her and took her and the flying horse to his court. Of course, the princess of Bengal was overjoyed at her rescue. And the next morning, when slaves came to her with jewels and magnificent clothes to wear, she thought the king of Kashmir was about to send her back to Shiraz, to her prince. Instead of this, she soon learned the jewels were bridal gifts from the king. The clothes were wedding gowns, and that the king of Kashmir himself intended to take her for his queen. The princess, however, loved only her prince and could not bring herself to marry the king. So she decided to make believe she'd gone mad, talking wildly and showing other signs of madness. The king became greatly alarmed and sent for all the court physicians promising them great rewards if they could cure the princess of her disease. And many came from the kingdom of Kashmir and from all the lands around, but not one could boast of success. During all this while, the Prince Feroz Shah, disguised as a holy man, had traveled through many provinces and cities seeking his lost princess. One day, while talking in the marketplace, he heard tell of a princess of Bengal who had gone mad at the court of the king of Kashmir. Feeling certain that this was his own princess, he dressed himself in the robes of a physician and went immediately to the palace to offer his services in curing the princess. The king of Kashmir gladly accepted his offer and ordered the princess's chamber door to be opened. The prince Feroz Shah still in his robes as a physician, went in, and at once the princess pretended madness, speaking wildly and making as though to attack him, just as she had done with the other physicians. Prince Feroz let her come close and then whispered, Princess, I am no physician. I am Feroz Shah. Pretend now that I have partly cured you and leave the rest to me. The king was overjoyed to find the cure so far advanced and called the pretended physician to him and asked him if he could complete the cure. Your Majesty, replied the prince, when the princess was brought here, she came under the magic spell of the ebony horse. This too I can end. Let the horse be brought into the great square tomorrow morning. Let the princess also be brought there. And to ensure the success of my work, cause her to be dressed in the most magnificent robes and adorned with the most valuable jewels in your treasure house. If this be done, I will show you the princess of Bengal completely recovered and restored in body and mind. The king eagerly promised to do this. Accordingly, the horse was brought to the great square of the palace the very next day. About it, the prince placed many pots of burning charcoal, into which he cast handfuls of incense, so that the smoke 
billowed high, and the horse could scarce be seen. Under the cover of the smoke, he placed the princess upon the horse's back. Then, leaping up himself, he turned the peg of ascent, and away they flew into the air. Nor did he descend until they reached his father's palace in the city of Shiraz, where they were married and lived happily ever after. Thank you.